What is going on killers welcome back to the channel guys as you can see i'm back out here in the garage and i am getting back on the budget 4.62 valve um, we are taking a break from the budget uh new edge build uh, as you can see making a lot of progress a lot of headway uh, unfortunately um the uh my brother the body man is out of commission for a week or so so we'll see what happens um i'm hoping as soon as he gets back to back better we'll you know we'll get this thing knocked out uh, i have a ton of other things i can do to it before they finish the body work but anyway i figured it would be beneficial since our little operation here is outgrowing my garage um i'm going to get this thing out of here so what i'm basically doing here is cleaning up the gasket surface with a razor blade and I am just going around and scraping where the you know the crucial areas so oh um, shit just dropped my blade anyway uh, don't really believe that you want to sit here and watch me do this so I'm gonna get back with you whenever I have this all cleaned up oh the sun finally decided to come out okay cool so, uh, you know, a razor blade, scotch brite pad, um, a brush, a couple little brushes, you know, um, and it's all clean. There's the exhaust ports. Here is the <clears throat> head gasket side of things. That's all nice and clean. And then the intake gasket surface. So then you're going to take a flashlight and look down inside let me see if i can get you a good view okay you see that little you see the valve you see that shiny thing that is the valve guide make sure none of them are broken now i've already checked these these are good on the exhaust side look down in there and of course the exhaust side is going to be a little bit more gummy but okay i could see that one that one's good that one's good. Uh, that one is good. And that one is good. All right. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to get a, a uh, straight edge and a feeler gauge. And we're going to check to make sure this surface isn't warped. Got my straight edge and a feeler gauge. And this is uh, 15 thousandths. So what I'm going to do is just lay it down across here. Uh, ideally, you would want one of the uh, the longer ones, but I know for a fact that this is straight. Um, I've done a lot of tests with it, but to make sure it is straight. But basically, you want to take it and just poke in the surface, the gasket surface, and see if it goes through. All right, check that side. Good there, good there. Now I'm going to turn it kind of crossways. Nothing. Then it's good. There's no warpage on this. Alright, so if you're going to mess with these, uh, I would highly suggest getting one of these. Uh, I bought this off of eBay from a company called Eurosport. Um, it is a very it makes things so much easier um basically you can get um two four of the valves without even having to move this tool you just mount it in the middle of the middle of the pedestals comes with all the hardware and everything like that so the next three pieces is you have this right here um, which goes over top of the uh, the retainer <sighs> and it's open and you have this little magnetic screwdriver and this bolt so you take this bolt and you run it down obviously mine's a little bent 
you can do it however you want to. I like using a wrench so I can I can feel a little bit more when you're using a ratchet. Sometimes it's you know you don't you can't really tell what you're what you're doing. Um, this uh, this will sometimes uh, start opening the valve, and you kind of gotta you gotta kind of hold it hold pressure down on it because it will uh, start lifting up off the off of your bench or whatever you're working on. go valve springs completely closed get my little magnetic screwdriver come over to the other side here you're gonna have two little keepers and voila they come out both at the same time now basically you're just going to reverse the process and you're going to do it 16 times. Lucky you. Now I'm not going to do all of them on camera. Obviously I'm not going to bore you guys to death because uh, you know, I'm not even going to, I'm not going to put it on a time lapse. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Nobody wants to watch. I'm not, nobody wants to watch me take this whole head apart. I'm just giving you an example of how to do it. Pull that out. Here is your spring, your retainer, and you lift this up, push that down, and you removed an intake valve. So basically, if you want it to, um, you know clean that up you would just take this and you would take this and put some um lapping compound on it and get your little suction cup and hand work it uh don't do it with a drill i know a lot of people do i've done it before but if you're just starting off please don't use a drill because you don't know um how to listen or feel or anything like that a lot of this stuff is done by hand um and for good reason um like this you can do it by hand and and by sound you can hear the different pitches uh, now what i'm going to do is put how i'm going to check the valve seals and guides is i'm going to put my finger on the back side of this where it came out at and i'm going to stick it back through and oh yeah immediately i'm feeling air pushed against my finger okay now that there's the valve now i'm going to follow put my finger back on there and pull and it's called pulling a vacuum so that is good I'm going to check my the the valve springs I think that's like one of the most uh, most critical parts of reassembly uh, the valves on these things I mean as long as you don't bend them they always usually stay in pretty good shape but you know it's you know the little keeper grooves and all that other stuff you just want to make sure they're not pitted up but they these valves usually stay in pretty good shape these are what I worry about so you want to check this make sure they're square you can use a square to check that and then you want to check the free length which I'm looking for like um, like 1.9 something inches of free length and as you can see or greater and these are like 2.05 2 so that's good these pedestals right here keep the cam up out of the oil um so the cam isn't just sitting there rotating and splashing and causing all kinds of windage and turbulence um so the only way the cam gets lubricated is through these little holes right here so i would say that is pretty critical so basically what you want to do is just take some you know some sort of like i'm using wd-40 you spray it down in there and you see the the see it come out that's the little valleys where the uh uh, the lash adjusters. I go any further. I just want to make sure that the cam spins freely and um, It does it does pretty good. I just cleaned up the journals with um, a soft pad on my Dremel <clears throat> And just put a little bit of engine oil on the journals. So good to go I'm um, gonna install the head on the block and uh, you see I already got that head installed Got a nice multi-layered gasket here 
and it's got that R on there for the right, which when you're looking at the a Ford engine, the right side will be on the left. <laughs> so it basically the right side is from like you sitting in the driver's seat. <sighs> Got that on the dial pin. Number one is at top dead center. We know that because we have the tool hooked up and I'm gonna get the head put in place. Looking good, looking good. Now, head bolts. These are torque to yield. Do not reuse them. If you do, use it at your discretion. Can't tell you what to do. All right, heads installed. New head bolts. Um, they are just drawn down in there, you know, hand tight. Uh, there is a pretty wild sequence and torque spec. Um, basically, you're you're gonna put your right hand in, take your right hand out, put your right hand in. Now I'm I'm messing with you. All right, so basically what we're going to do is uh, the the sequence is going to be on the intake. You're going to start on the intake side, okay? So it's going to go one, two, okay? Three, four, all right? Five, six, okay? Seven, all right? And you're going to come all the way over here. Eight, nine, ten. Got me? Kabish? Okay, so once you do all that, you're you're gonna do like this little um basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna tighten it down to 30 foot pounds. Um and there's like more specific um foot pound, you know, got like more specific uh specifications, but 30 is probably the best you're gonna get with most I'm pretty sure most of you don't have like really expensive snap on stuff. So basically it's going to be 30 pounds, okay, 30 foot pounds, and then you tighten it an additional 90 degrees, then you loosen it one full turn, then you tighten it back down to 30 foot pounds, do 90 degrees, and then an additional 90 degrees, all in that, in that pattern, okay? So you're going to do the first sequence. The second sequence, the third sequence, it's very, it gets very confusing. That's why I'm telling you, get a manual. You will not regret spending that 20 bucks on eBay. So I'm going to get this tightened down and I'll get back with you as soon as I'm done. All these brand new lash adjusters, I've been soaking in oil for months. <laughs> they are about to find a home, one in each of them holes. For those of you that are unfamiliar with what a lash adjuster is, or if you are a youngster and you have your dad helping you and he has no idea what I'm talking about, it is equivalent to a lifter, except it is hydraulic. You install the cams in a neutral position. That mark is there. That mark is there. I'll show it to you more whenever I put the engine back up, you know, on to where it's more of a V. But I'm going to put the cam caps on um, in sequence. Uggy Duggy, I mean, not Uggy Duggy, torque spec, totally torque spec. No Uggy Duggy. There you pretty much have it. Both cams are in a neutral position. Kind of take notes on where that mark is right there and where that mark is right there. Um, the next video will be the timing chains and buttoning everything back up and um, maybe slap a coat of paint on it. I'm going to close this video out. If uh, you like this little project, um, this is kind of a junkyard project and anybody that is in the two valve game, this should be your starting point. Basically 300 horsepower right off the bat. Uh, it's a great starting point. Um, so when you are junkyarding, look for something that has a non-PI in it, grab it, and, you know, get your heads, work them, um, do your magic to them, and I think you'll be much happier with the results. Um, if you like what I'm doing here, smash that like button, uh, subscribe if you haven't, and, um, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.